All right, here we go. Uh, last few questions. We got 51 here. Which expression is equivalent to this expression right here? Essentially, they're asking us to simplify, and we're going to use our exponent laws uh, that we probably learned in class. Um, now, the, all the exponent laws, they're all on your uh, star chart. So we know when we have a power raised to power, we need to multiply those two. So that x to the eighth raised to one half, that's going to actually turn to x to the fourth. Right? And this squared right here, we need to square the three, and then we also need to square seven. So kind of be careful on that. Some people are going to want to put 14 there. That's actually seven squared, which is going to get us 49. So you're going to get 49, and then the x, once you multiply your powers, that's x to the sixth. Okay. Now, another rule says that if we have an x times an x with the powers, we take the powers, and then we add them up. So that will be x to the tenth right there. And then I guess we just need to find the correct answer based off of that. So that one looks like it's a b. Now, as far as some of the other answer choices, <clears throat> be careful, a. Uh, a would, someone might select A if they do, instead of the 49 right there, instead, if they do 7 times 2, instead of 7 raised to 2, 7 times 2 would get you that 14. That's the only difference there. Um, as far as the powers go, I'm not sure how you could get X to the 7th. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where, the, and, you know, someone might have a misconception with that. So, I, you know, those are just not good answer choices there. Uh, but be really careful with the 7 squared part right there. That gets you the 49. Okay. Next one here, the function y equals 3.75x, or it's 3.75 uh, plus 1.5, and then parentheses x minus 1 can be used to determine the cost in dollars for a taxi ride of x miles. What is the rate of change uh, of the cost in dollars with respect to the number of miles there? All right, so <clears throat> I guess here, in this case here, this equation is a little weird, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. I'm not sure if that's going to affect the answer too much. In this case, it probably won't. So I'm going to distribute that 1.5, so we're going to say that's 1.5x, and then minus, and then... Negative 1 times 1.5 is just minus 1.5. Okay. And then I guess we can combine our like terms and add those up. You got the 3.75 and the 1.5, so I think that's 2.25. And then plus 1.5x. Okay. <clears throat> and then from there, so it's asking what is the rate of change, and essentially that's asking for what is the slope. All right, and this thing, notice it's really similar to y equals mx plus b, except it's written in, uh, backwards as far as the format. So the m part is at 1.5. So it's going to be 1.5 per mile. Now, did you actually need it to go and get x by its, or I'm sorry, y by itself in this situation? Not really, because I already have 1.5 kind of right next to x. So some of you guys might have been able to get that without it. Um, so just be careful with some of these other answers. 3.75, that's not changing. It's just 3.75 by itself. There's no x attached to it, so definitely can't be that. <clears throat> I guess a 4.25, um, not exactly sure. Maybe that's like after you drive one mile or something like that. Uh, but that's not going to come out. 5.25, that's not going to come out either. So F on that one, uh, pretty straightforward. So... All right, <clears throat> 53, which graph best represents a function with a range of all real numbers greater than or equal to 6 or negative 6? So since we're talking about range, that's our y values, we're talking about greater than or equal to negative 6. So that means the lowest point or the lowest y coordinate needs to be negative 6, and then it needs to be going up from there forever. So we're going to look at all of our options here. Notice here, be careful, on A, yes, the vertex is at negative 6, but the uh, actual y value for that is negative 6, 0. So that means the lowest y is actually 0. Okay, so that's obviously not going to be a good option. B, be kind of careful here. 
the lowest y or um, the lowest y is actually not six. That's the highest y. Right. We don't want the highest y, we want the lowest y because the range values need to be greater than or equal to negative 6. That means the both ends of the graph need to be opening upward. So then when we look here at c, notice that the lowest that graph goes is negative 6. So that's why c is going to be our best option in this case. Uh, be careful on answer choice d. It's kind of like a except it's upside down, so it's not even going the right direction. It's not even the right y value. The y value for this one right there is 0 and below, so that's not correct there. So C is the best answer on that one. That's because the lowest it goes is negative 6, and then it goes up forever. So we say y is greater than or equal to negative 6. <clears throat> All right, and then last one. What is the x value in the solution to the system of equations? And so... With system of equations, there's a couple of different ways you can solve these here. You could solve by graphing both and figuring out where the intersection is. And if you have them solve for y or if you're able to graph them easily, that's not too bad. It's uh, actually rather easy on those. Uh, another way you can do, you get your solutions, is you can do something called substitution. or elimination. And if you need help with those different techniques, there's probably a hundred videos online that you can watch with those. Uh, with this example, I'm going to use substitution just because it's ready to go for substitution and I'll tell, tell you what I mean here by that. So a substitution, you want to solve for x or solve for y on one of your equations and then you want to take what the y is equal to or the x is equal to. So in this case, it's already solved for y. And you want to plug that stuff in for, whoops, plug it in for this y on the other equation right there. So instead of writing y on that 2x, on that y plus 2x equation, we're going to put y and then plus 2x equals negative 1. But instead of the y, we put in what y is equal to here. So that's the 1 half x plus 4. Kind of like that. <clears throat> All right, and then since we don't have anything to distribute, we don't need our parentheses anymore. And then, uh, so I guess we can combine our like terms. So you got two and a half right there, so I'm going to just write that as 2.5x, and then plus 4 equals negative 1. And after that, I guess we'll get um, the x by itself. We need to subtract 4. That's 2.5x equals negative 5. And then we need to finally divide after that. Divide by negative 2.5. I think that's going to go in negative 2 times. And that is your x value. Now in this situation, they're only asking for the x. But typically, when we do these in class, they also ask for the y value. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys that. To find the y value, you go plug your x back into either equation. And it doesn't matter which one. So once again, they're not actually asking for this in this problem here. But I just want to show you here real quick. Just in case you're a little confused on that. Or maybe you get a question that asks for the y value instead. So half a negative 2 is negative 1. And then we have negative 1 plus 4 is equal to 3, so there's your y value. Okay, so obviously g is going to be the best answer here. Um, <clears throat> I guess if you solve for the y instead first, or maybe you solve all the way for the y, maybe you accidentally choose j. They're only asking for the x. And maybe some of these other numbers, maybe you get some of these like 6 over 5 or 10 over 3. You might get those if you make like a little error a little mental error, arithmetic error as you're working through. But those are not correct there. So anyways, that is it.